Good morning. Uh, my name is Park Ho Chol. I'm working for Overseas Business Development in Busan Port Authority as a Vice President. I have been uh, participating at this money forum uh, several years in a row. However, this year, I'm meeting you uh, through the video because of uh, COVID-19. At this moment, uh, I will introduce uh, about Port Busan and during the COVID-19. Also, uh, I will uh, give some uh, uh, just an uh, explanation about uh, Busan port and competitiveness, which is enabling uh, Busan port to be a very important any uh, global hub port. Also, finally, uh, I will introduce uh, some projects we are working in Busan and overseas uh, countries. Okay, let me start from a Busan port overview. Busan is uh, the second biggest uh, transshipment hub port in the world, uh, followed by uh, Singapore. Also, as of uh, 2019, Busan is uh, the sixth biggest uh, container port in the world. Also, uh, Busan port is handling 75% uh, of whole Korean uh, container volume. Last year, Busan port has handled about 21.95 million TU, and at the beginning of this year, uh, we have had a target to achieve 22.6 million TU by achieving 3.5% uh, growth than uh, 2019. However, because of uh, unexpected and corona, maybe I think at the end of this year, Busan port will have about minus 2% growth than uh, 2019. This is the status of world ports since 1985 until uh, last year. As you see here, in the top 10 ports in 2019, only Singapore, Busan, LA Long Beach are non-Chinese, but the other seven ports are shared by the uh, Chinese ports. This is again a more detailed uh, status of Port Busan. Uh, Busan is now uh, number six uh, biggest container port. This is again, uh, Busan port is uh, the second biggest uh, transshipment port. Number one is uh, in the world is uh, Singapore by handling about 86% of entire uh, throughput in, in Singapore. Busan, Port Kelang, or Tanjung Pala Pass. Port Kelang and Tanjung Pala Pass are uh, Malaysian ports. They are taking uh, good advantage of uh, geographical location sharing the uh, port of Singapore. So this is again uh, Busan port uh, domestic uh, market share in Korea. As I explained before, then Busan port is handling 75% of uh, whole Korean uh, container volume. Number two is Incheon and number three Guangyang. However, in between number one and number two, there is a big gap anyway. So this is a Busan port throughput by nations until in 2019. Number one country to Port of Busan is China. Also, number two is the USA and Japan. Those three nations are explaining about 61% of Busan port and uh, transshipment volume anyway. So uh, at the second part, I want to introduce uh, some uh, actions we have done uh, during the uh, COVID-19. This is a container throughput since uh, January of this year to uh, June anyway. Uh, end of this year, I think uh, in case of uh, export import cargo, we will have about minus four or five percent. Then however, in case of uh, transshipper cargo, we may uh, just attain 1% uh, or 2% growth in spite of any COVID-19. So this means that Busan port has a very strong point in uh, transshipment. So uh, this is uh, three major actions one we, we have done during the COVID-19. For the office management, we have operated in three systems. One third of our staff were working at the headquarter in this office. 
Also, we have operated uh, our backup office in uh, International uh, Passenger Terminal. One third of our staff was working at the backup office. Also, one third as a work from home system anyway. So now uh, there is a uh, the fluctuation of the uh, corona and the level then. If we go to again uh, corona level two, uh, social distancing I mean, uh, a lot, maybe we will uh, just uh, carry out uh, similarly uh, that uh, operation of manage, uh, office management anyway. So second thing is uh, deferred and uh, post use collection. When the ship is coming to Busan port, they have to pay a port dues to our office within uh, two weeks of after vessel arrival. But however, to ease the uh, carriers any cost burden, we have deferred any uh, collection and due date three months. At the third part is uh, we have made a very uh, emergency incentive for shipping companies. Uh, operating vessels in just between uh, between Northeast Asia, uh, China, uh, Japan, and Busan port. Also to support any shipping companies who may suffer any uh, loss for their business anyway. During the even during the uh, Corona 19, uh, Busan port was 100% uh, operational. As of today, there is no case of uh, any Corona 19. COVID-19 infection in uh, terminal workers. So this means uh, we could any uh, operate and maintain the full operation of uh, Busan port. Uh, next, I want to uh, introduce background of uh, Busan port as uh, the second busiest uh, transshipment port. So this is a uh, kind of any uh, competitiveness of Busan port as a transshipment port. I want to give you any uh, six factors as a competitiveness of uh, Busan port as a transshipment port from number one to number six, location to productivity anyway. If I go to detail of the, that uh, competitiveness, let me start from uh, location. Busan port is uh, very well located anyway, because Busan port is uh, the nearest, the closest uh, Asian port crossing the Pacific Ocean from USA. Also, Busan port is uh, exactly uh, in the middle of uh, G2 and G3, China and Japan. So we are connecting them with highly uh, sophisticated and network. So this is very important, any competitiveness of Port Busan. Next is connectivity. This is very important. Connection is uh, very important, any uh, the factors in, in, in uh, transshipment port, then Busan port now is uh, operating uh, the second uh, large any, uh, service, only followed by uh, Singapore anyway. This is again uh, uh, connectivity of Port Busan, by, however, by focusing on the deep sea connection, deep sea any service only. In deep sea means an, just an ocean going to Europe or to America or to o Oceania, to Latin America anyway. So if I give any kind of any uh, weight as a, as a 10, as a perfect number, uh, Shanghai, they are receiving about 9.4 points, then Ningbo, uh, Singapore, and Busan. Anyway. So they are major uh, global ports. The number three is uh, also very important, uh, last port to North America. So this is explaining about uh, Busan port status. Uh, connecting to to just the east coast of USA and also west coast of USA. So this means Busan port is operating uh, the largest any service in, in in global port to uh, Northeast America anyway, just in North America. So next is uh, deep water anyway. So Busan port is uh, maintaining uh, up to 80 meters. Also, a very uh, little uh, tidal difference is also one of any merits. Also, the conditions is very important. So, shipping companies, uh, when they are operating any transshipment ports, also there are the shipping companies are considering many points. Busan port this year we had uh, September, unfortunately, 
three consecutive any typhoons, quite uh, very exceptional case. Normally, Busan port has a very mild weather and also very nice and weather conditions. So also they are supporting Busan port as an important and tri shipping port. Also, finally, is uh, productivity of Port Busan anyway. We are expanding a, a new port, very excellent any port infrastructure. Also, high productivity and also outstanding service is very important any factors for in the productivity, along with any stable and labor relationships. Okay, let me uh, introduce major development projects of BPA. Now here is uh, in Korea, in Busan. Okay, let me uh, give you any three major, any uh, three major any projects now we are working on, uh, from number one to number three. Number one is uh, Busan Newport expansion. Anyway, now we are operating uh, 23 berths, but uh, eventually we will. Uh, Construct up to 45 berths. So now, already Busan Newport is very huge size uh, complex of uh, logistics. However, from now we are constructing 40% uh, more from now anyway. The second thing is uh, Busan uh, Newport and district park development. The third one is old port redevelopment. I want to give you any detailed information about these main three uh, projects. Uh, let me start from uh, Newport expansion. If you see the, uh, this any photo, satellite photo, uh, gray color means uh, under operation anyway. Yellow color means uh, in future development anyway. We have any 23 bus, uh, three major uh, global alliances are using uh, Busan port as a very important uh, Northeast Asia transshipment airport. Okay, this is another any, uh, detail of uh, new port expansions. Now we are operating 23 berths, but the uh, future we will have uh, 45 berths. So, uh, so this, is, uh, this means we are uh, continually expanding or developing. So we have a high expectation about the transshipment cargo, so we will not stop any uh, construction. The second thing is, uh, district park development. We are uh, constructing about 8.5 million square meters. All this area will be uh, appointed as a free trade zone. So uh, if you see the, this photo, then uh, blue color means any future uh, construction anyway. So once this uh, free trade zone is completed until later than 2025, it will be about 8.5 million square meters. At this moment, uh, the largest any investor in this area is uh, uh, Japanese companies, also Chinese companies, and also the other uh, overseas and countries are also investing. So mainly they are looking at the, uh, this district park for the uh, very attractive any uh, taxation incentive, also very attractive any uh, the list fee anyway. We are supporting them to use Busan as a, as a airport. So here is uh, in, in this uh, district park, uh, assembling, uh, packaging, storage, and labeling are impossible anyway. We have uh, two clear targets in investing in this district park. One is increasing uh, transshipment cargo. If I uh, give you some example, the Amway American company is using uh, Busan Newport, where this uh, free trade zone, as a, a one of the global uh, distribution center in uh, Asia Oceania. Anyway, so beca because of any uh, the Amway's investment in uh, this uh, free trade zone, so we are creating more than uh, 200 people for only this uh, uh, this an uh, Amway any uh, distribution center anyway. Also, uh, if I say again, uh, trans increased transshipment cargo and also creation of job are main reasons why we are investing uh, this area by giving very attractive any taxation incentive, also uh, list fees here. 
Okay, this is finally uh, North Port redevelopment. Since 2006, we started to operate a new port. Expanding new port, slowly we are uh, closing this old port anyway. So uh, after closing this old port, we will uh, redevelop uh, this old port as uh, like this, like uh, to create more jobs or to provide or more any waterfront to citizens, also to build more any commercial side anyway. I think if, if for example, uh, just a, there are two directions. First one is for commercial, for money anyway, but the other is uh, for any waterfront or for citizens anyway. I think in case of uh, maybe if you see the the global the cases of redevelopment. For money side, uh, most representing the port, maybe uh, Dubai. For the uh, waterfront for citizens, I think uh, Sydney can be, Darling Harbor can be uh, most representing case of uh, uh, redevelopment direction anyway. Busan port, if, uh, exactly speaking, it is kind of any uh, half and half, but more to any waterfront, if we see the the, uh, the size of redevelopment, any direction, anyway. Okay, finally, I, I want to uh, introduce uh, some of any overseas business development now we are doing. I am leading uh, this overseas business and development project. First, this is, uh, now we are investing in five countries. To Europe, now uh, we are uh, constructing or starting to operate in warehouse in the uh, Netherlands in Rotterdam. Also, the other area is, uh, is Barcelona in Spain. In case of Europe, we are considering to uh, find another business opportunities in uh, Eastern Europe. So if we successfully accomplish uh, this overseas business in Europe, this means we have any north, south, and east, so we will make any like a triangle and a post for the logistics in, in Europe. In Asia also, we are investing in, uh, or we are very actively uh, discussing with uh, some uh, partners in three nations, India, Vietnam, also Indonesia. Maybe I think we are, put some port authorities uh, very widely open to have any partnerships in investment in uh, logistics in overseas any countries anyway. So now we are starting any step or starting position. However, we will continually expand our capability of uh, investment in overseas countries. So maybe if you have an interest, then just our door is open. So we are welcoming uh, just your any uh, opinions for our projects. So this is a project outline in Rotterdam, uh, Mass Blackte uh, Distribution Center. We will open uh, this warehouse uh, just around uh, November next year. So we have a good uh, partnership with Samsung SDS for uh, operation of this warehouse. Next year is a very meaningful uh, year to Netherlands and Korean government. It is a uh, 60th anniversary of uh, diplomatic, just any uh, normalization between two nations. So we want to open uh, this warehouse within uh, next year to celebrate uh, two nations and uh, diplomatic uh, normalization. Also, finally, this is a project outline in Barcelona. Then uh, just any. Uh, if you see the uh, Barcelona ports, there is a uh, very excellent any uh, warehouse and complexity. Then uh, we are choosing uh, one of them. Then uh, now we are uh, very actively uh, just any uh, collaborating with uh, Spain, uh, Spain uh, Barcelona port authority. So if we successfully uh, starting operation by making a JV with uh, Barcelona port authority, it will be maybe the first case of a collaboration between two any port authorities. Okay, this is end of my presentation. Thank you for your listening. Then uh, I want to ask your, I want to uh, just your any safe and healthy 
any lives anyway. Thank you very much for your listening.